welcome to the CCFR Radio Podcast, your source for news, updates, and stories from the CCFR. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 114 of the CCFR Radio Podcast. I'm your host, Rod Yiltaka. Thanks for joining me again today on the podcast. Um, I have a whole list of stuff to go through with you. Um, a couple of weeks ago, it was hard to find a bunch of stuff to talk to you because, you know, you might, you may not have guessed that sometimes there's a two week period that happens or even a month where not a lot happens for gun owners. <laughs> so we were struggling, Tracy and I were struggling last time and this time we are not struggling. We've got a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, so, uh, of course I'll bring on Tracy as soon as I go through my, uh, my updates and we will take it from there. But before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Vortex, the force of optics. So thanks to our friends over at Vortex Canada for continuing to support the podcast. We really appreciate it. You can check out all the great uh, products over at vortexcanada.net. That's vortexcanada.net. And of course, our great friends over at the Saskatchewan Rivers chapter of Safari Club International. They do a lot of great work over there, including supporting the CCFR and the CCFR radio podcast. So if you want to check out all of the rest of their great work, you can do that at saskriversci.com. That's saskriversci.com. Okay, now, got my list. First thing I, I think we'll cover real quick is the miniature elephant that's in the room, which is the studio looks different, right? Um, looks a little bit different. It's all been rebuilt. So um, what I've the reason that's happened... And hopefully you like it. But the reason that that's happened is I'm getting more physical guests in the studio. Um, and it's primarily for the television show because if you've been watching the TV show, you know I've had some physical guests here. The studio wasn't configured for that. So it was kind of cobbled together. You know, you're looking off and, you know, into other rooms kind of behind the guests. It's just, it's you know, wasn't especially well lit or whatever. It was the best that I could do on short notice when trying to pull this TV show together when... You know, it was a it was another typical thing that the CCFR has done, which is just we had never done that before. And, you know, how do we make this work with what we have? And the more that I was getting physical guests inside the studio, I'm like, man, there are ways that I could reconfigure this space. So um, this studio is it's in a commercial building, right? We have a, a small commercial space with a few different studios in here. And so what I do is I tore I just dis, I dismantled this entire studio myself and rebuilt all of it with three new cameras, um, new mics, and all the rest of that stuff, and and uh, trying to reconfigure it so that we can have guests in, and it still looks cool, still looks like the same place, uh, just just larger. So anyway, all that to say, uh, you get a new kind of look for the podcast, and then uh, and for the television show, it looks a little bit better, and we can now have guests uh, in a place that looks like it was meant to have guests in. Now, now that I have all this stuff, I've got a few more wrinkles to work out because I haven't had physically had anybody in here. So there's some audio things with multiple mics in close proximity and stuff I got to work out. But I think I might even start bringing a few people in even to help me co-host the podcast. You know, I got my good friend Scott Carpenter from International Shooting Supplies and Scott's a really articulate, great guy. He's a per personal friend of mine and he's close. Uh, so I might even bring him on to just to help me banter back and forth about stuff, which will be a lot more entertaining for you guys too, rather than listening to me blabber on endlessly. I mean, uh, I, I definitely feel for you because I can't stand listening to me <laughs> blabber on about these things. So uh, yeah, some changes there. Uh, next thing, the Mass Casualty Commission. So as you know, the CCFR has, um, we're a participant with standing in the commission, meaning that we have uh, access to all the evidence and all the things that the public doesn't have access to. And what's expected from us is to go through the, the, um, go through the evidence and the foundational documents and bring our expertise in there and basically be a resource for the commission when it comes to the question of access to firearms, because that's, that's a big question um, and how legislation and regulation interacted, um, what role did those things play in the mass casualty event uh, could there have been um, laws that could be enacted uh, that would have mitigated or prevented this? Did any existing laws mitigate or prevent this? I mean, you can imagine what the answers are already because it's that's not that much of a difficult question. Uh, but the, some of the other things that uh, that we're doing is we're playing a role in roundtables and uh, and consulting on in other matters and providing a report. So if I hadn't mentioned this already, um, after the deadline, there were no other gun groups there. After the deadline, uh, the National Firearms Association applied to be uh, to be a, um, a participant with standing. They were let in, 
And then the NFA and the CCFR are now in a coalition. So we have to work together on this. So I've been working with Charles Zatch over at the NFA, and we've got actually a really great working relationship going right now. And uh, we had to create a report together. Because our groups are a little bit different and we see things from a different angle, our report has two different sections, one for the CCFR and one for the NFA. And Charles and I have worked really effectively, I think, and uh, created uh, a report that that brings a different perspective to the commission itself. And and that's going to be a public report as well. So it's a it's a you know, I think together we we did an effective job of saying uh, to the public, you know, there's another perspective on the role of firearms in this thing. And here's some things you, you should consider. So proudly, Charles and I have uh, submitted our report uh, today. So this was Wednesday. You guys are watching this the next day, Thursday. And um, I don't know when that's going public, but it should um, fairly soon. So look forward to seeing that as well. Uh, next thing I want to talk about was National Range Day. I didn't want to talk about the usual stuff that you hear us talking about, which is participation, all the rest of that stuff. I just want to let you know that uh, that it is a really big project at the CCFR. We're really trying to we're trying to push a really big machine here. Um, and basically, we're trying to get a lot of different people from a lot of different organizations to participate in something that they've not or, you know, participated in before, something that's brand new. Um, we've sent out all of the, uh, the invitations for people to participate to the other firearm organizations, to the wildlife federations, to the uh, sporting organizations like your, your IPSICs and your IDPAs and, and whatnot. And one of the other things that we've done to try to encourage and retailers, and we've uh, done something else to try to encourage people to participate, which is we've got somebody full time physically calling these folks and saying, like, how can we get you to participate? What's standing in your way if you're not? How can we assist you in the events that you're planning? Can we make recommendations on how you can uh, observe or celebrate National Range Day? Stuff like that. It, it takes a tremendous amount of effort to get other people to participate because the easiest thing in the world to do, especially when you're busy, is nothing. Right. That's the easiest thing. It's like, wow, we're, you know, we're thinking of, of really having a good look at it next year. Right. Well, there is no next year. Every year that goes by, we're losing more and more. And if we're going to establish this as a, as a Canadian tradition and establish it in such a um, uh, such a meaningful way that it's going to outlive the CCFR, it's going to outlive me. The whole point is nobody ever remembers who even started it. That's what we're trying to do here. So nothing's branded CCFR, nothing. Everyone has access to the logo and has the right to use it to make merchandise, to start it, open an online store, National Range Day store. Yeah, well, you'll have a license to use the logo that everyone else is using and do that for yourself. So, and you just contact us for that and we'll issue you a license for it. So it's, it's there's no excuse for anyone to not to, not to participate, right? So we're trying to make sure that we're doing everything we can to help that along. So when I say it's a, a big project, it's not just a website and an idea and some social media posts. Like we're really putting a lot of resources and a lot of time uh, into making this a reality and and leaving this as a legacy, basically, right? It's really important. Uh, so yeah, the rest of the National Range Day um, um, verbiage and the commentary, we'll, we'll go back to the normal stuff later, but I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, and last thing, so if you've been seeing the... Uh, the television show, uh, CCFR Radio on the air, you may know that uh, that it's ending. I'm just uh, working on episode nine, and it ends on episode 13. So I'm in discussions as we speak with uh, Wild TV and looking at a second season. And then, and that second season may start as far away as January. And it might be for, we're, we're thinking about 20 episodes. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of work to produce 20 episodes. So these the these shows I have to produce myself because everything every aspect of it has something to do with me <laughs> unfortunately right I can't I can't I can't avoid it so um so I made the decision barring anything bad like my health going sideways or the world catching on fire thermonuclear war or whatever right anything that we can't really control uh pro we're probably going to do a second season of 20 episodes and like I said January we're, we're looking for January but the thing is, between now or whatever, a month from now, when the the season ends in January is a long time, and a lot's going to happen with guns. Like a lot is going to happen. So we're also looking at doing a monthly update show. Basically, it's you know CCFR radio on the air in between kind of thing. One every month 
to keep you updated for those that uh, that may not see this here on on a podcast or maybe you've got wild TV uh you know just kind of in rotation in the background you know doing what you what you do um you'll see the, uh you'll see CCFR radio on the air monthly from now until then so that's a lot less work for me to do but it keeps people that aren't you know members of the CCFR or that are online a lot that just have uh, television still watch television you'll have them you know keeping up with what's going on and understanding the most important thing about the 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 series the show itself is understanding that if you're a hunter or a casual firearm owner you're not out of the woods you're just next in line and uh, in fact I just finished an interview with Dane Lloyd uh, MP from uh, from Central Alberta just outside of um, outside of Edmonton and if you if you know Dane is the is the is the MP that was on the public safety committee that grilled the interim chief of police of of Ottawa Steve Bell I think about the you know so called loaded you know firearms in in the trucks at the uh, at the protest in Ottawa and uh, I was just talking to Dane and and he was the one that brought it up it's actually going to be in the interview that we're doing for episode nine which will be out in about a week and a half actually maybe a week. <laughs> um, that you know once the this this whole thing you know what i should have brought dane on to explain it but basically we look at this as a, as a political issue for the liberals but political in in a way that it it's 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 different for for them political politically they're like well we want to get rid of these these firearms and because we can use these firearms to scare urban voters Right, it's the way that he put it. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Scare voters into, you know, if, if you don't vote, don't vote for us, you know, the the conservatives are going to come in and they're going to bring all these uh, assault weapons with them, and you know, Canada will be the Wild West or it'll be the United States. And of course, it's absurd. It's, I mean, this is messaging for, this is messaging for for, for very soft minded people that would even believe something so ridiculous. These are, these are the same firearms and the same people and the same sports and the same uses and all that that's been going on for sixty years in Canada, right? Nothing has changed whatsoever, but the, you know, the, the, uh, the liberals just love, you know, pulling the bell, sounding the alarm, pulling the fire, you know, the fire alarm, right? They're always doing these things, ringing the bell, um, to try to scare people into continuing to vote for them when these people have really no other reason to vote for liberals. But nonetheless, this is, this is not just going to end as we always say with, with, you know, so-called, you know, assault weapons, assault style weapons. It's not going to end with semi-autos and handguns because they're going to need more to make guns an issue next time, right? They love this issue. It really works for them, especially with very ill-informed, highly irrational urban voters, right? That's, that's, that's their audience because there's a lot of people like that and they're very, very easily influenced. So they're still going to need more. They need more meat. Well, where is that red meat once they've already thrown them these so-called assault-style weapons? Yeah, it's in the it's in the rapid-fire firearms like lever actions and pump actions, and then the long-range sniper rifles. You know, hunting rifles that can be converted to military-style sniper weapons. Those are going to be next because they need to keep feeding the beast, right? And these <laughs> the beastly people, right? The ones that that uh, that buy this kind of stuff. So it will, I, you know, I assure you, it will never end. It's not, it's not gun groups trying to trying to continue to exist. I would love it if there was no reason for the CCFR to exist. Like literally two months from now, if it was like, oh yeah, it's all over and this uh, great, I would be gone. I would be gone so fast it'd be ridiculous, right? Or I'd be doing a podcast or doing something else. You know, I, I I wish we were in that position. We just we just aren't. So anyway, I would I would actually I'd like to thank Dane for bringing that up in that interview um, and just providing that insight. Like it's never going to be over for the liberals. It's too profitable for them. It works too well in securing the votes of certain demographics. Right. So anyway. All right. So those are the opportunities that make the the TV show worth doing. Um Anyhow, I've talked way too long. It's been like 15 minutes. I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Uh, let's bring on uh, Tracy right now. All right, via Skype, we've got Tracy Wilson of the CCFR. Wilson! <laughs> Giltaka! How's it going? Oh, well, you know, just another crazy week here in the nation's capital. Yep, it's always crazy everywhere for some reason. All right, yeah. we've got like a, a huge list of stuff that we have to cover. Uh, so let's get started. The first thing we want to talk about is uh, you've been attending some some uh, Conservative Party of Canada leadership candidate 
uh, events. And there seemed to be a little bit of misunderstanding floating around about that. Yes. So I'm getting some interesting <laughs> feedback. Um, basically, what's going on, as, as you know, there is a big leadership race going on within the Conservative Party of Canada leading up to September 10th when we find out who the new leader is. So, of course, all the various candidates are out there campaigning and hosting these events. You know, you've sort of got Polly Ebb with his, uh, his rock concert style <laughs> style uh, events. And then I've been to some other events for other candidates as well. And, of course, I'm getting all these messages saying, why are you going to these events? You know, don't support that person. So I just want to be really clear with everybody that my attendance at any particular candidate's event does not in any way equal an endorsement. It means I'm out there working for you guys to make sure that regardless of who wins leadership, and I mean, we'll try our best to influence it in a positive direction the most we can, but regardless, whoever wins leadership, it's really important to me and to you that they have a good, sound, effective policy that we can all get behind. So we sort of have a vested interest in making contact with each candidate, getting out there, seeing what they're about, um, you know, just my mere presence is a little bit of pressure to keep the um, the plight of gun owners in mind. And yeah, I I would don't want to be in an echo chamber and just follow around one person. So I think it's it's imperative that we make sure we chase all these guys around and gals and make sure that they're uh, that they're promoting a good, strong policy that we can appreciate. Yeah, well, there's a, and there's a couple of things in there. For one, going to as many of these um, candidate events as possible is your job. You have to go yeah. and, and see what's going on and, and talk to each one of them. You have to make sure that mm -hmm. you're there and present, right, for the reasons that yeah. you said. And the other thing that, that you know, I think um, our members and gun owners in general should remember, it's it's one thing, you know, like it's one thing to try to win a leadership race and promise everything to everybody. And it promised them things in explicit terms. It's another thing entirely to win a general election when everything you said during that that leadership election is dragged up and and now represents what your position is in a general election. Because if we don't win a general election with what with whatever candidate wins, we we're going to get nothing. Yeah. So just you got to you got to yeah. gotta think a little bit longer term. And I know everybody wants to hear what they want to hear. Like, I get that. I want to hear it, too. But just just really think about that for a second. You, you need somebody that's not going to be so tainted by this, that, or the other special interest, including ours, that they can't, that they're unelectable at the, at the, at in a general election. Right. So that's, so I don't know what, what am I saying really? Am I saying just read between the lines or, or, you know, don't, don't think that the, the extent of their work for gun owners ends just for, you know, by whatever they say, or is defined by whatever they say in the leadership race. Exactly. In fact, the stuff they say to, in the leadership race to either pander to gun owners or pander to the other side um, isn't nearly as important as what they're able to defend and, and promote going forward in a general election. So it's sort of our job to make sure, you know, yes, I want to protect the interests of gun owners, but that also means protecting the candidates so they're not taking political fire for the things that they promise to do. So, yeah. Yeah, really, really important. Okay, uh, next thing. Uh, revival of gun shows. There's uh, there's gun shows oh. happening. Yay! Yeah, it's like you can imagine. This is great for gun owners. I mean, we've been through this crazy pandemic. It's been a couple of years. Of course, all these indoor um, indoor events were canceled because of the pandemic. So it's been a couple of years since we've been able to gather and attend and enjoy each other's company at gun shows. So if you know, you watch the CCFR group. Everyone's always posting when the uh, gun shows are in there. But this weekend in particular, there's a, a, a weekend of heaven in Calgary. So we've got two special events going on in Calgary this weekend. Friday and Saturday, head on over to Calgary Shooting Center. They'll be hosting their annual Glock Days, which is a great opportunity to get out, shoot some guns. You don't have to have a license or experience to try. And of course, this is all a fundraiser in support of the CCFR. So... You're getting to go out, shoot some guns. We'll have uh, CCFR field officer and gunny girl Samantha there working a table. So go by and say hi to her. Uh, big thanks to Jeff Reese and the whole team at Calgary Shooting Center for this annual event. They've been supporting us for a couple of years with this, and it really helps. But while you're in Calgary going to this, don't forget to stop by at the Calgary Easter Gun Show, which also goes on this weekend. And it's one of Canada's 
biggest gun shows. So great opportunity to get out, see each other, check out some cool guns, get some good deals, and just get out there and enjoy uh, our great Canadian sport. And we've got a booth at the at the Calgary Easter Gun Show, correct? Yes, we absolutely do. And I know there's a there's a, a prize rifle. I saw a post about this. That's what I was getting uh, at. in the CCFR group. This is an Alberta centric draw because it's going to be following around to the gun shows over the next couple of weeks. And if you go down and renew or take out a new membership in the CCFR or make a minimum ten dollar donation, you'll be entered free into this draw for an amazing rifle. So. Make sure you stop by the booth, chat with all the the folks there, renew your membership, and uh, yeah, get entered to win a cool gun. And that that rifle, I think, was supplied by the Shooting Edge. Yes, Isn't it's. That correct? Uh, it, I think so. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty amazing gun. So we would have liked to have it travel across the country, but it's just not logistically possible. So it's a great win for Team Alberta to have that cool gun there, and of course, you know, we've got our own stuff going on. Um, as far as gun shows, there's also uh, big news. Not only is September 10th leadership weekend for the CPC, it is also TACOM is back on in Toronto. So that's super exciting. That'll be held at the International Centre in Toronto, same place as Toronto Sportsman Show. And that, of course, is Canada's largest tactical and competition shooting show. All right. Well, once again, a nice, clear thank you to uh, to the folks over at the Shooting Edge for donating that rifle, just to make sure that that people know where that came from, because it kind of was slipping under the radar a little bit. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I got to say, the support from uh, from the Alberta guys is just fantastic. So big thanks. It is. Both of those shops have been really, really Both good to shops. us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So and, and I can't tell you how much we appreciate it, because we need the help. And then yeah. they're, both of those guys are always there for us. So thank you. Yeah, they are. All right. Now, the uh, the annual general meeting for the uh, Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights is coming up uh, at somewhere around the end of June, correct? Yeah. So this was a bit of a struggle. I know we've been stuck hosting them virtually for a couple of years and everybody wants to get back together. Um, we will be hosting our AGM. Unfortunately, in our, in our bylaws, there's a setup that we sort of have to have it within six months of the end of the year, which, of course, is year end, right? So we have to have it before the end of June. So we'll be hosting it on June 25th. Unfortunately, it will be virtual again this year. And the reason for that is there is still some travel restrictions and mandates in place. And we're just we're just going to give it another year because I think um, I don't want anyone to feel excluded that they can't come because they can't travel or they can't uh, get around, get across the country. So we'll go virtual one more time. And it also saves the CCFR a pile of money. And as you know, we are funding like the largest, most complex court challenge, all these projects, the TV show, podcast, everything. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll host it virtually. It'll be on June 25th. I'm going to be sending out uh, director nomination information. There are some seats open on the board of directors for the CCFR. So that'll be going out next week. And of course, this will be the fourth anniversary of our beloved staffer, Steve, joining our team. So... Uh, we'll be giving a shout out to staffer Steve for all the work he's done and how integral he's been on this team over the last four years. Now we couldn't have done it without staffer Steve. Oh yeah. 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 It's just, just, he's been just yeah. a rock. Wouldn't have been possible. Mm -hmm. um, all right. And the last thing we'll talk about real quick is uh, Ms. Tracy Wilson will be here with me in the studio because she's coming to British Columbia and that will be at the, uh, in the week of May 2nd. So I think we're going to be recording some stuff on yeah, that Friday. Yeah, I'm flying in on the f two, three, four, four, five, six. Yeah, so on the sixth, she'll be here with me, and we're going to do um, a podcast uh, where she's here live in the studio. And then I was thinking, and this is the important part, I was thinking that if you all wanted to submit questions, uh, Tracy and I would do a separate episode of CCFR Sidebar. If you remember, I did an episode of that. I mean, it's an episode of whatever. I created that thing. And put out a video and put a different title on it. Let's let's see it for what it is. But um, I was thinking of doing an episode of that, which is just extra stuff. If you're, you know, if you have questions and you're curious about how we would answer something like that, you can always tune into that video again. Always defer to the podcast. That's where the important stuff that we're doing is. And this is just extra, extra behind the scenes stuff. So um, submit your questions to podcast at ccfr.ca or podcast at firearmrights.ca. 
Um, any questions you want, we'll pick a bunch of them. And uh, and I always like the tough questions uh, for some reason because they're just more fun. Uh, but ask us whatever you want, and we'll pick a bunch of questions. And then uh, Wilson and I will sit together here in the studio, and we'll answer them for you. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, that's the idea, at yeah. least. So yeah, I was I was like, man, this is going to be so we have so much stuff to cover. It's going to take so long to do this. Uh, and we're done in like, I don't know, 10 minutes. <laughs> How does that even work? And then the other it's times because we're, we're so efficient. Well, you, you know what it is? Yeah. It's the fact that we're having to do these TV segments, which is seven minutes. So yeah. we, we choose two or three things and it's got we're going to be done in seven minutes and we're getting a little better at being more concise to the to the benefit or the detriment of of whoever's watching this right now, I guess. Um, you know what? There's one more thing we can talk about now, which is budget 2022. That's something that we uh, we didn't talk about. Yeah, of course. So the uh, the liberals have sort of doubled down on their uh, debt and spending and introduced. I think it was fifty eight billion dollars uh, worth of debt in budget 2022. And of course, right away, um, I was looking to see what sort of investments or or funding and was set aside for the gun ban. And there was no specific funding put in for the gun ban or the mandatory confiscation buyback program. Um, so we'll we'll see how they intend on funding that. However, there was a written uh, recommitment to making it mandatory. So I, I still think they're sort of in limbo over there. They're not sure how to implement it. They have no idea what it's going to cost or or how to make it happen. But they still want voters to be reassured that they they plan to continue their attack on legal Canadian gun owners. So, yeah, just kind of just kind of an interesting point about the budget, because normally that would have a line item in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. who knows? That's that's good. You know, it could be a lot worse. Um, yeah. But the uh, the important thing to remember is because of the our updated court schedule, you know, the further out they push that, the better, because our we will have a decision on our case. And, uh, and as I've said before, there's, there's some things in there that we are, it's, it's more than highly likely that we will win. I mean, you can never say for sure. Um, and there may be some things that we don't win on in, in our case, but at least right. we'll know we'll have an answer to some of those things. So the further off we push that, the better. Yeah. And of course there will be legislation I'm sure coming, as you know, uh, C21 died on the order table when the writ was dropped for the last general election now, the House uh, schedule for the House of Commons, they're only sitting until June 24th. So we're, you know, they, they've got some time and um, I'm sure they'll, <clears throat> excuse me, table something between now and then. But yeah, we've got our, our our thumb on the button watching to see what they plan to do to us next. So well, we'll ho see. Hopefully they do it right and ban uh, squirt guns, water guns. Yeah. Because, you if know. It just saves one. Yeah. yeah, if it saves one life, if it saves someone from losing an eye, <laughs> um, then it's all worth it. Totally worth it. Yeah, mm -hmm. anyway. All right. That's uh, That's got to be the end of our list. We were, we were really scrambling for things last week, actually. But anyway, there's all kinds of things were happening this week. Yeah, lots going on. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for the update, and we will uh, see you next time. We'll see you then. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for episode 114 of the CCFR radio podcast. Um I would like to thank all of you for watching. And if I would ask you for something, if you know gun owners, maybe that aren't politically active or maybe aren't watching the podcast or haven't seen our show on WOW TV, suggest these things to them and let them know that there's a lot of really important information in these podcasts and the television show. And the stuff that we're talking about is going to affect them as gun owners one way or another, whether they're involved or not. So anyway, see if you can spread the, uh, spread the information around a little bit. Also, to those of you who have supported the CCFR, either by becoming a member or donating. I just want to say thank you very much. And I just want to, I want to thank you for the trust that you have in us. It's, it's that, that trust is very meaningful. I know I've said this before, but every time I start talking about this stuff, I, I feel it again because your trust in us and your support in us allows us to do really big things. And we just couldn't do it without you. And <laughs> I hope it's going to help. I hope someday we're going to be like, I know we did a lot of things, but you know, it turns out that we held this back or we got this right back or whatever. I just, anyway, we can't do it without you. So uh, we're also trying to offset some really big uh, legal costs, right? Our, our case is really big and it's a very expensive, highly competent team. And we're hoping that's going to make a difference, but that, that results in some pretty big bills to pay. And I'm getting some big invoices and 
And for our motion record that's going in, there's a big invoice coming for the motion record itself because that's the culmination of everything. So anyway, if you can help us out, uh, feel free to do that by going to firearmrights.ca, donating or becoming a member. We'd really appreciate that. All right. Thanks very much, like I said, for watching. Take care, and we will see you next time. This is another episode of the CCFR Radio Podcast. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.